Okay, we have your ten dollar integral from the MIT integration be 2012. This one here is problem eight. We have the integral from zero to pi over two of dx over one plus sine x. Okay, I feel like I've done a problem really similar to this. I'm not exactly sure. I was going back, but I've done so many integrals lately I couldn't quite figure out if I've done this one before or or what. Anyway, let's just get started with this. So what I did for my first step is I wanted to multiply this by the conjugate of the denominator one minus sine x and we'll multiply of course by the same thing in the numerator. So we're not changing it, we're just multiplying by one over here. When I multiply this out in the denominator, this is gonna be one minus sine squared x, but one minus sine squared x is the same thing as cosine squared x. And then we'll just bring this one minus sine x into the numerator. And then what I wanna do from here is I just wanna divide this cosine squared x into each term. All right, so that's gonna give me, for the first one, one over cosine squared x is gonna be just secant squared x. That's pretty nice. And then for the second integral, we'll split into two integrals. For the second one, I can write this sine over cosine squared x. I can break the cosine into two pieces and write this as tan x times secant x dx. And now we have two easy, very well-known integrals here. So we just kind of memorize the formula for each of these. So for secant squared x, integrating this, this is gonna give me tan x, and then bring the minus, integral of tan x secant x, this is gonna be the same thing as secant x, and we just need to evaluate it from zero to pi over two. And now at this point, this is where we get into some trouble evaluating these bounds. Like first of all, at pi over two, well, when we evaluate this, we'll evaluate it as a limit, but tan at pi over two is going to infinity. And then similarly, secant at pi over two, that's also going to infinity. So this is a problem here. So anyway, when we evaluate at pi over two, we're gonna have this infinity minus infinity case, which is an indeterminate form, and that's a problem. So what I'm gonna do here, let's just kind of work with this and see if we can do something to help this out. So what I can do is I can write this in terms of sines and cosines. So I'll write this as sine x over cosine x minus one over cosine x. And then of course we have a common denominator, so we can write this sine x minus one over cosine x. And then what I'm gonna do from here is I'm actually gonna multiply by cosine x in the numerator and denominator. And this is gonna give me cosine squared x. And what's gonna allow me to do is kind of undo what we did right here, because cosine squared x I can write as one plus sine x times one minus sine x. So let's just write that out. But then here, what I can do is pull a minus sign out of here. Let's just, I'll write a minus in front of the cosine x so I can reverse the sign and make this one minus sine x. I'm doing that just so I can cancel here and here. And then at this point, we've kind of fixed this problem. The one minus sine x was our real problem of valuing this pi over two. And now that we've canceled it out, I think we're in good shape. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna evaluate this thing, put my bounds back in here. So now we'll plug pi over two in here, and this is just gonna give me zero, but it's cosine of pi over two is zero, so we're gonna have a zero for the first piece, and then we plug in zero. This is gonna give me minus one in the numerator here, and then plugging zero in here, sine of zero is zero, and we're just gonna have a one here. Minus times minus, that's gonna give me a plus. Zero plus one is gonna give me my solution, it's just gonna be one. So that's it, kind of a pretty easy integral with one little dilemma that we had to deal with right here. And after that, we were fine. So we'll stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching today. Have a great day.